Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Beatrix. So today I'm going to talk to you regarding academic stuff. I'm, I have completed my CPA Australia program while working full time. So I'm going to give you some study tips and tricks for the program itself. So before I started, uh, this video is not sponsored and this video is purely based on my personal experience. But hopefully by the end of this video, you find it useful and you could apply it to your own situation. So without further ado, let's get started. I started my CP Australia program in 2017. Um, by that time, I'm actually already working full time in accounting field. So um, the experience portion is no problem for me to complete. But what I'm going to talk to you today is regarding the study portion. So CP Australia itself is consists of six subjects on the study portion which is four of the compulsory subject and two of the elective subject. I first started the CP Australia program in January 2017 and I only completed it in May 2020. Um, I take one subject every semester and I took one deferral. That's why it takes slightly longer than I expected to complete the program. My first subject was ethics and governance. Once I completed the exam of ethics and governance and I realized that I barely passed it. <laughs> I barely made it and I kept thinking where it goes wrong why such result so what I wanted to tell you the first tips is really there is no magic trick here you just got to set aside some time develop a study strategy and hopefully you can improve your passing grade by it, by sticking to your study strategy and the second one that I wanted to tell you is uh, I know there's four compulsory subjects that you cannot avoid on that one, but there's two elective. So when you're picking up your elective, try to pick up an elective where your strength is. Like for example, for me, my strength is located in the calculation, more on the mathematics side. So when I pick up my elective, I try to pick up some elective that has more on the calculation side rather than more on just words and readings to be done. My next tip will be try to make a study schedule and stick with it as much as possible because once you miss that study program just miss that schedule it's very hard for you to take an extra time to study and catch up with this the program itself sometimes you could even utilize like if you go to work you are commuting using train or buses you can take time during your commute to read on your CPA program material itself. And my next tip is you really, really have to finish reading. It's not necessary for you to memorize everything, but it's important for you to understand what the concept is, what is this uh, subject is trying to teach you, what it's trying to tell you about. And then once you finish reading it, um, you can perhaps put on some summary of flowchart aside so it will enable you to re do a revision quicker and faster later on. The next tip that I'm going to tell you is uh, try to utilize all the resources that's given by the CPA Australia program. So for example, once you go into my CPA program, then you'll be able to access the first one is the forum where you can post all your questions and somebody from the CP Australia will attend to your question. The second one is the study group. You can build a study group or join other people's study group uh, for this to help you with your study. But unfortunately, I don't really use uh, this function as well. The third, what I'm going to talk to you is regarding the third function is the knowledge equity. Inside of the knowledge equity itself, you will be able to access a couple more resources, for example, like the video explanation of um, your subject. And I found this video explanation is very good to help you to understand your subject because they are short videos and they are very concise. So that's the best part of it. You can understand your subject in a shorter time. And the second resources that you could use is the multiple choice questions. The sample, there are a lot of sample of multiple choice questions in the knowledge equity portal, which you must attempt to do it. Why I said you must attempt to do it? Because most of CP Australia program, the exam is tailored in a MCQ type questions. So if you don't tailor, you don't familiarize yourself with 
how you would attempt to do the question itself and you will be very overwhelmed by the time you step into the exams. The third resources that are available from the knowledge equity is the practice exams. Depending on your subject, the, the practice exam that's available might be one or two practice exams and it's very important for you to attempt this practice exam in the exam-like manner. So set aside, set aside some time like one or two hours and pretend that you are really in exam-like environment when you attempt these exams, there's no distraction at all. So um, you can familiarize yourself with how the exam environment is right and you could get a grasp of it basically. <laughs> so coming back on your practice exams, so after you have done your practice exams and you still couldn't understand why some questions has this kind of answers, uh, I would suggest you to go to the forums in the CPA program portal and you can post your questions there. Hopefully somebody from the CPA Australia will come back to you with the answer. Or you can go Google and search for the answer. If you cannot find any answer or you don't have time anymore, I would say just pray. Hopefully it doesn't come on the exam. I'm sorry I couldn't give you any more helpful answer at this point of time, but this is basically what I do when I face this kind of situation really. So the next tips that I'm going to tell you how to put remarks on your textbooks. Why putting remarks on your textbooks? Because most of CPA Australia program exam is open book. So you can bring your textbooks to the exam venue and refer to it when you're doing your exam. But it's very hard if you don't put a proper remarks on your textbooks. So when you put marks on your remarks on your textbooks, remember only mark the important sections and the questions that persistently comes out on the practice questions. At least that's what I do. And then you could also use the table of contents, mark on the pages with, or write the topics that not listed on the table of contents and put remarks next to it and put it as the important sections. So this will be my last study tips before we moving on to the exam tips. For the last study tips, Again, I cannot emphasize more how much you should familiarize yourself with the study material because this is most, of, most likely your exam will be open books exam. So you need to familiarize this as much as possible. So what my suggestion will be, you must at least read twice your textbook before going into the exam. Moving on next to the exam tips. So now you have studied everything and you are so ready for your CPA Australia exam. Don't forget. To prepare your ID, prepare your exam material, and go uh, to your exam venue early. Especially if you're traveling by public transport, you never know what's going to happen to you on the exam day itself. So you don't want to be caught in a situation whereby, oh my god, I forgot my ID, I forgot my exam material, or you perhaps you forget something important, or you get lost in the when you're traveling to your exam venue. So very important, be organized and go to your exam venue as early as possible. By the time you enroll for your CPA Australia subject, uh, the system will prompt you to book for your exam as well. So by this time, you actually know when you're going to take your exam and where you're going to take your exam. It's allow you plenty of time to plan for your study and for your leave as well. Normally, in terms of leave, I will take one day off one week before my exam just to ensure that I've completed all my studies, all my readings, and then I will take another one day off before my exam itself just to ensure that I'm just to sort of like calming down myself to prepare myself for the exam next day. You have heard me saying this again and again, familiarize yourself with the exam format. I presume before you enter the exam venue, you will be already know how many questions that you're going to have in the exam, how many marks your exam worth, and then how much time you have to do your exam. And then using this information at hand, divide your time equally across the questions. So you know how much time you should spend to earn a mark in the exam. And then stick with that time plan. If the question is taking too much time, skip it. Come back to it when after your exam. Because your exam will be in computerized version, so you can always tag the questions that you are not sure of or that you cannot do at that point of time. And you can always come back to it after you attempt all the other questions. My next suggestion will be to utilize all the time that is available for the exam. Even though if you finish the exam early, don't leave the exam venue first. You must check your work, 
to ensure you have answered everything properly or perhaps you can take that time to check back your work whether they are correct or just to ensure there's no silly error that you make during the exam. So coming back to the tech questions, after you attempt all the other questions and you come back to these questions and you still couldn't figure out what is the answer of these questions, seriously. <laughs> so if I were you, this is what I will do. If it's MCQ, I will pick the closest answer. For example, if I calculated the result to be 24, but the closest answer is 27, I'll pick that 27. But again, if you couldn't figure it out at all, and it was just purely words, there's one out of four possibility you answer it correctly. Just pick either one of the options. If it's short answer questions, I would list out the facts not necessarily in paragraph, you could also do it in bullet points because it's easier. Potentially, you could get one or two marks for listing out the facts as well. Okay, that's it for my study and exam tips. Um, again, I would like to conclude there is no magic tricks, people. You just have to spend your time to study and then develop a proper strategy so hopefully you can improve your grade and your chance of passing that exam as well. By improving the study and exam technique, I managed to improve my score and passing grade as well. So here are the results. I got two pass, one credit, two distinction, and one high distinctions. I bet you guys can do much better than I do. So if you guys find this video useful for you, please click like and subscribe. And I wish you all the best with your career and your study. And I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,